Harry Potter, the boy who lived, come to die. And welcome everyone to the Watch That Bleed podcast. Today, Raj and I are here to talk about our spoiler-free and spoiler review of The Secrets of Dumbledore. Now, you may be asking, where are the other three people? And I'll tell you, they were invited to the movies. They bought tickets, but then they didn't show up. So you know what? You're stuck with me, who's a big Harry Potter fanboy, and I got my Slytherin scarf on here. And you're stuck with Raj, who knows Harry Potter, but not to the extent of other people. But you know what? We're going to make the best what we got. We got our wand sitting over here. We're ready to go. Mm-hmm. I got this Death Eater wand that Jacob gave me. I got a little the Severus Snape wand. <laughs> and we're out here. Listen, I left my wands at home. I didn't bring them with me to college. But, you know, we got this one here. We got the scarf. We're ready to go. So I think the way we're going to break this down is we're going to first start with giving our spoiler-free thoughts, just thoughts on the movie in general, um, nothing giving it away. So if you haven't seen the movie and really don't want things spoiled, you can listen. We will give you a big warning before we head over into a spoiler review, and we will obviously cut anything out if it's too revealing. But I think general first impressions, Raj, what is your impression leaving the theater in a non-spoiler way? So, I mean, like, we kept seeing the critic reviews, and they're like, yeah, this movie's like, what, it's like a 3 out of 10 or something like that? Yeah, they were pretty mid-reviews. Yeah, like, they gave, like, they kind of bodied the movie with the reviews and everything, and personally, I didn't think it was that bad of a movie. Like, will I say it's the best thing Harry Potter has made? No. But it's not the worst. Like, it's not as bad as uh, Crimes Against Grindelwald, like... It was a solid movie, and, like, in my opinion, I told Justin this as we were leaving, I'm like, it's a solid, like, kind of, like, filler movie in the five-movie series, like, yeah, like, basically what you get out of it is, like, it's kind of like a filler, but it's still an enjoyable watch. Yeah, I mean, I think, absolutely, you, I, I would disagree a little bit on the filler comment, but for the most part, the movie is entertaining, you see a lot of familiar faces that you want to spend time around, like, obviously, it, the, the movie's about Dumbledore. So, like, you see a ton of Jude Law who does a great job. I think Mads Mikkelsen, like, Johnny Depp, Mads Mikkelsen transition was really something that people were worrying about. But I think Mads Mikkelsen killed his role, and I'm not spoiling anything here. I think he does a better job than Johnny Depp because you believe his character more, and we'll talk about that in our spoiler review a little bit more. But the movie's enjoyable. Was the pacing maybe a little bit fast at points? Yes. Was storylines underdeveloped? Sure. But if you are, if you are a big Harry Potter fan... You're going to have a great time going to the theater to see this movie. I think it is better than Crimes and Grindelwald. And I, I don't think it's better than Fantastic Beasts, the first one, um, for many reasons. But, I mean, go watch it, especially if you like the series. And if you haven't gotten into the last couple of Harry Potter movies, Fantastic Beasts, Crimes and Grindelwald, and now Secrets of Dumbledore, go see them, especially if you like like the original Harry Potters. Or even if you don't, like go, go get involved. They're, they're good, entertaining movies. There's... This movie is way more funny than Crimes and Grindelwald. There were times I was like audibly like laughing. So I think I think it's funny. I think there's yeah. good there's decent action scenes, um, big reveals. I don't I think it's an enjoyable film. Like, again, it's not gonna not gonna win any Grammys or whatever. It's not gonna win any awards. <laughs> Grammys is for music, bud. Oh, Grammys is for music. Okay, it's, 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 an, Oscars. O- it's an Oscar. <laughs> I need Keep my th- wife's name out your mouth. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not gonna win any Oscars. It's like it's not that quality. But it, it is good, and um, that's as much as I can say. And that was a quick two-minute <laughs> synopsis of our spoiler-free review, but I do think we want to get into spoilers. So for everyone listening right now, we are moving to a spoiler review. Everything said from now onward could contain spoilers for the movie. So if you have not seen it and you want to go see it before you listen to this, please, like... Don't tell us we spoiled it. We've given you plenty of warnings. And we will this is your final warning. Do not go past this point, because after this point, we will be dropping a plenty of spoilers. And if you're not a Harry Potter fan and don't care about getting the movie spoiled, please stay. But if you're a Harry Potter fan and don't want the movie spoiled, exit out of Spotify, Apple Music, or YouTube, or whatever you're listening to this on. Thank you, and we will continue. Excellent. I think we got the message clear. <laughs> so now we are moving to our spoiler review. And by spoiler review, I mean we're just going to freely talk about things that happened, things that bothered us. So I think, where do we want to start with? The good, the bad, ugly, middle? Like, where do we want to start with this? I think we should start with the beginning, honestly. Like, I mean, personally for me, like, that beginning scene, I, in all honesty, I should have rewatched Crimes of Grindelwald because when I first saw the intro scene, I was like, I do not remember any of this happening because like i was like i remember sitting there i was super confused and i even asked you questions i was like 
wait, when did all this happen? Yeah, I mean, the first, first right off the bat, like, they start talking about the Blood Pact, right? Um, and, um, again, mm-hmm. spoiler spoiler review, Dumbledore is sitting down with Grindelwald in a tea shop or a restaurant or whatever, and they are talking about it. Like, so you are thrown instantly into it. And I think part of it is because they are trying to fix the Mads Mikkelsen, the Johnny Depp. They're trying to just, like, to get you into uh, Mads Mikkelsen's Grindelwald, which is vastly different. It's a very, like, brought-down-to-earth guy. And just speaking on that for a moment... He's not as crazy looking or crazy acting as Johnny Depp's Grindelwald is. Now, I think Johnny Depp's Grindelwald is very good, but I think you need to you need to convince the audience that Dumbledore once loved this guy. And I don't see a world in which Dumbledore would have loved the Johnny Depp Grindelwald because he literally looks crazy and he acts crazy and he does crazy things, but Mads Mikkelsen's Grindelwald is very much more like He's a normal fella. He looks very normal. He acts pretty normal, but he has this really dark side. And they 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 do show that throughout the movie. And I think they reestablish it because of the actor switch. But no, right off the bat, they start talking about the blood pact. So if you did not watch Crimes of Grindelwald, you're toast. Now, I don't think it's a flaw. Fl- like I don't think it's a flaw with the movie. Like they expect that you're watching that. But it is a if you're gonna go into the theater being like, oh, I haven't seen Crimes of Grindelwald. Like I watched Crimes of Grindelwald with my girlfriend like a week before we went and saw. So like. I had everything right on the top of my head. I've read all the books. Like, I, I know the characters very well, so I knew what was going on. But if you didn't, you'll be confused. Um, so I think, yeah, right off the bat, you're at the diner scene. And you just see, like, the power this blood pact holds. You got Dumbledore and Grindelwald, who both want this blood pact gone so they can, like, fight each other. Actually, I don't really know if Grindelwald wants it gone because he's going to get his ass kicked. But um, Dumbledore wants it gone, but they can't do anything. They're sitting down at the coffee shop just talking. And you kind of see... The derangement of Grindelwald because he's like not like Dumbledore's like dude you've gone crazy and it's just mm-hmm. he hasn't so I think that opening scene was good my hair keeps falling down over here um I, I, opening sc- I know I know I know maybe I'll just like flip around real quick <laughs> well he does that I mean like the one thing I I personally this, did this not know worse. they switched the actor like I had no clue they switched from Johnny Depp to what's the new actor's name uh Matt Circleson yeah, I had no clue they switched, and, like, uh, for if whoever's on YouTube, that weird scene behind me right now, looks like I have four arms, but, basically, like, I had no clue they switched the actor, and honestly, I re- I, I still thought it was the same actor at first, and I was like, hey, what happened to his hair, and what happened to him crazy, going, looking crazy, and I was like, actually, I really like the way they, like, changed him, he looks, like, normal, like, you know, like, I mean, normal is, like, a relative word for how kind of crazy he gets throughout the movie, but... I really, I really like the actor change, honestly, and like it, it changed the mood of the movie too. Mm-hmm. And they do spend time focusing on that. I think they have the scene where um, they're chasing this, the chillin, which is um, something that's supposed to sh- look into your soul and really like know, like know truly if you are a good person or a bad person. And Grindelwald just outright slices its throat, like in cold blood. And like maybe they would have had that with Grindel, like. Um, Johnny Depp's Grindelwald, but they needed to do it with Matt Mickelson to show you this guy might look a little bit more normal, but he is still, like, cold-blooded and and it's lethal. And for that, they did a great job. Um, I can't... I wish I saw the movie a second time because I can't, like, go through each part of the movie. Um, But I think... Actually, hmm, where do we want... Good or bad? (laughs) Where do I want to start? I think we'll start... I think we'll start with the bad. Yeah, Um, bad. We'll start with bad. Um... And by bad, I mean things that I could point out. I don't. I didn't leave the theater going. This really bothered me, but it is an issue with the movie. And the number one thing I can think of is pacing. The movie moves really fast, and I think, and you can give me all the reasons for why it moves fast, like why they need to move the story fast. But at the end of the day, the movie moves fast, and that's a problem. They go from. I mean, if you look at the trailer and look at those bits, like they're on the train, which is where. The trailer has um, Jacob getting his wand, and they get to that pretty early on, and then you kind of were left with a lot of the movie. The movie's long, so it's not like it's like a short movie. Um, I think it's long. It's a um, it's pretty. It felt long. Um, it feels like a long movie, and then you're you move through it very quickly because they have so much stuff they need to get in, and it's very jumpy. They jump from point to point to point. Now again. That's kind of the point. Like, there, our characters are in different places, but you don't, like, you're constantly apparating to one place. 
constantly traveling to one place and you're in very different setting i mean we're in germany for part of it we're in i mean they're in Aust- they're in austria for one point of it they're we're in brit berlin not berlin berlin is germany um we're in um britain for a little bit of it and we're also in america so you're very you're going to very different places and newt is somewhere in the middle of a forest when we first see him so they're all somewhere um and yeah so i think the pacing is an issue raj what do you think about the pacing yeah, like, honestly, like, I'm not, like, the most avid Harry Potter fan as Justin is, but, like, I, I know, like, I read the books, I've watched the movies, and I w- did watch uh, both the first Fantastic Beast movies, and I was sitting there, and even I was confused for a little bit. I was like, what is going on? And then as everything, like, starts processing, I start figuring out by remembering what happened in the last movie, it's already on a whole brand new thing. And, like, with what Justin was saying, how they would apparate, like, to different places, like, it, it was super fast, like... They're, at one point when they're in Berlin, then they operate back somewhere else, and I'm just like, what? And mm-hmm. like, for people who aren't like big avid Harry Potter fans, like they'd probably just be saying they're like, like, what is going on? And it, I mean, granted, I mean the movie started out with like us not knowing where Newt was at all, but I mean, that scene itself, I was still confused. I'm like, why are they killing the Chillin's mom? And wait, there's two of them, and mm-hmm. what's the whole point behind this animal? They did explain it later on, but, like, I don't know. I felt kind of lost for the first, like, few, 10, 20 minutes, but eventually it all, like, came back to me, like, halfway through the movie. I'm like, okay, this all makes sense now. Yep. And, and it picks off kind of where we left off. Um, they're just credences with Grindelwald. And it, I mean, it's a little bit time later, but, um, like, Newt's just out there doing his thing, and Newt is getting the chillin', which is Dumbledore sent him on this task. So it's not like... Newt is just out here, like, looking for the chillin', and they like, oh, <laughs> it happens. Like, no, Newt was on a quest, and you see instantly the stakes of the movie. Like, one of the chill, the chillin' mom dies. Newt gets stunned. Um, he's sprawled out. I mean, Credence could have easily killed him at that point in time, but he just, like, didn't kill him. I mean, not like it was, like, bent over with him with his wand, but he just, like, he took the chillin' and left. But if, if he was ruthless, he could have easily just taken his life. Um... And they were lucky that there was twins. And, I mean, that's part of, like, it's a little bit of a plot convenience. But, I mean, I believe it. Like, litters usually have, like, m- multiple kids. So, I'm like, I could I could believe that there's twins. But, um, and it's cool. And I think, kind of, I don't want to talk about the good yet. We'll, <laughs> we'll stick on the bad. Um, I think if you were looking for blockbuster reveals, this was not the movie for you. If you spent a lot of time, and I... I try not to theorize. I, I always say this with Marvel movies that I hate when people like try to uh, like try to like guess what's gonna happen, and like oh yeah, I knew cause it, it just ruins it for everyone. And I did that to myself a little bit. Now I wasn't disappointed, but there was a part of me that was a little bit like that was a little bit epic than I thought. And I think the biggest reveal is who Credence's dad is, and this is a whole big deal. I had a crazy. Not crazy. I mean, other people would come up with it. I just had kind of conformed to the theory. I'm not going to complain. I'm like a mastermind. But my my thought was that Dumbledore had found a way to use a Philosopher's Stone on Ariana's, his sister's, Obscurus, to give it a new body. And it happened to be a baby boy in Credence. And um, it went over to America to get away from Dumbledore because that's what Dumbledore does. He pushes people away. Um, he did it to Harry. He, um, he did it to Credence. He did it to his brother. And they talk about it in the movie. Yeah, he pushes people away. Um, and I had thought that they were going to use Philosopher's Stone, and I thought it was going to be Dumbledore's sister. Um, D- Dumbledore's sister now turned brother. And that's not what happened at all. Aberforth just had an affair with a woman, and she left away, and that, that's a son. Now, does it make a ton of sense? Yeah, the, the phoenix came to them and everything, but I think if you were like, oh, what is this big way that they're going to be related? It's like, no, I'm like they just had they just had a kid, and the kid got pushed away. And that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, granted, I was a little confused about that. Because when you, I remember you were explaining your theory to me. I'm like, huh? Like, I was a little confused because, I mean, granted, that theory kind of did seem a little like, okay, that's a little crazy. But well, I mean, the, it, the deciding factor is Ariana. I don't know what in language it means, but Ariana mm-hmm. translates to another language to silver. And Aurelius cha- translates to gold. And the second power of the sorcerer's stone is to change other metals into gold <laughs> that's okay. what sold me 
it makes sense, but that still seems like a stretch. Also, it's J.K. I mean, yeah, J.K. Rowling could do something like that. But also, it ex- <laughs> yeah. Again, this is a theory, and this, I, I'm not, I first heard it on Super Carlin Bros. I love their channel. So if you guys have, are listening, uh, even though we're way smaller than them, I'll shout them out because I love them. Um, but they had come up with a theory, and yeah, I mean, it was it's out there. But also, like. Why does Dumbledore know Nicholas Flamel? He's an alchemist. Like, what is Nicholas Flamel known for? The Sorcerer's Stone. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting that Dumbledore would want to work with Nicholas Flamel, considering he doesn't, not really an alchemist, Dumbledore. Okay, the more you talk about it, the more you're selling me on it. Yeah, I it, like, it, it would have made sense. sense. If that had happened, I would have been like, that's cool. But also, it may, like, you can't be disappointed with the outcome because it makes sense. Like, mm. simply, like, you saw the girl on the boat, like, why was, why was Credence going over to America? Because Aberforth's girlfriend, or whoever it was at the time, wanted to get as far away from him as possible. That makes a ton of sense. Like, how do I get away from this issue? I, like, I, I, I go to America. Aberforth doesn't follow them. That's why the kid is pushed away. And kid gets swapped at sea, and mom dies, gets put into foster care. Like, it all lines up well. You can't poke holes in it. You can be disappointed that this big reveal about who he is is there, but that's just how it's going to be. Like, mm-hmm. um, So I think the reveal is a little bit there. I thought other things were going to happen as well. I thought there was going to be a big reveal about where Tina was because she wasn't in the movie. Now, I think, yeah. I think the actress could not be present for filming for some of it, so that could have been a reason why she wasn't there. But I had like thought that maybe she would be bunty newt's assistant in in disguise kind of to like not be a uh like to not give her presence away as an or that didn't happen and whatnot but again it makes sense why bunty's there like she's just helping the cause i think it's a little bit underdeveloped and it kind of goes into another bad and that a lot of a lot of plot lines are underdeveloped like we don't know much about bunty but we probably should especially after what happened in this movie like she doesn't do anything particularly cool but she is very trusted in the role she is given in this movie. And it's like, but why? Does she have any exceptional magical abilities? Because there's no, like, there's a lot of fighting in this movie. So what about if Bunty got into a fight? Like, would she be able to, like, kick ass or? Yeah, like, I, that's the one thing. I was super confused. I'm like, where the hell is Tina at? I'm like, I, I had no clue about the actors or anything before coming into this movie. I was just like, they showed maybe, like, two to three scenes with her. And I'm like... They just basically killed off her character, or just like didn't really put her in the movie. And like, it, I mean, the movie did lack with Newt's relationship with her. Like, it just didn't show it at all. Besides mm-hmm. the like the end, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna figure this out later. They pr- she's probably not in it for some other reason. But then, is it just me? Or was there something weird between Bunty and Newt? No, there is. So Bunty, uh, from all um, other accounts, really likes Newt. Like okay. in the first Fantastic Beast movie. Is she in the first one? I can't remember, but she one of the, is. whatever one she's in, um, she's like super like okay, Newt, what can I do? And Newt's like gonna go um, d- help fix the, the kelpie in the water, and um, she, Bunty is like, you could t- are you, aren't you gonna take off your shirt? Um, like she says that, and then um, Newt's like, oh, you can go home, Bunty. And Bunty's like, I'm not going home, and whatnot. So like, there's a like there's a weird dynamic there. Um, but like they don't, I don't think it's reciprocated from Newt because the whole time Newt has Tina's picture in the suitcase. And Mm -hmm. do I think the movie lacks a little bit because Tina's not there? Yes. But I was more, I more noticed it because I was trying to figure out where, like what Tina was, how Tina was going to show up. But if I had just watched the movie and was like, someone told me, Hey, Tina's not going to show up. I don't think I would have missed her. It was more just that I was like, I think this is going to be Tina. Like, Tina's going to show up in this type of way, and she didn't. Um, and then also, yeah. N- Nagini's character also, I think, had an issue with being able to meet the filming, so she didn't show up at all, which is probably, I would say, pretty big for Credence, but it makes a lot of sense now with what we know, that Credence, like, obviously goes back with Aber Forth, and they're probably going to try to fi- find a way to heal him. And it would make sense that Nagini would come in now, being someone who, like, used to confide in Credence and being like, okay, you found your way, you're safe now, I can come be with you. Um, so yeah, we'll see like, where, we'll see where that goes. So, I mean, the thing with that, like going back to like the whole new Bunty and Tina thing, like 
the throughout the entire last scene, like I was expecting Tina to make some big reveal. Like when Bunty was the one who gave the suitcase, I was like, I was, I thought that was Tina for at the that mo- at that moment. I completely was like, that's that's Tina. Like it's the Polyjuice potion wore not wore wore off. Like I thought it was her. Wait, what potion? Polyjuice. It turned like you use someone. Oh oh, hair. Polyjuice. I yeah. I heard apology. I'm like, what oh no, is that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was like, no way, it's been her the whole time, but, like, it, it just wasn't. I'm like, well, what is she doing? Like, I get, like, yeah, she's the head order now, and, like, she's probably busy, but, like, she definitely had to have some role, especially with the plot of the movie, where, like, they had to, like, make so many different scenarios that it clouded uh, Grindelwald's vision. Yeah, I yeah, absolutely, and they did the thing they did in Avengers Endgame, or just, event, yeah, Avengers Endgame, where they go, Captain Marvel, where have you been all this time? And she's like, there's a lot of other planets that need my help. And that's what they do They do here. They say, hey, Tina's the head horror at, um, over in America. Like, she can't come. And it's like, I think this would require Tina's help. But, like, I'll, I'll buy it and just not worry about it. So, like, I think if you're going on, like, a can I watch, um, does this movie make sense, like, logistically, like, like that? No. Like, it doesn't make, makes zero sense why Tina wouldn't be there. Like, she's been in the other two movies and whatnot but you, you got to get over it and especially if you're just trying to enjoy it, if you're not trying to nitpick mm-hmm. um but it is a downfall i wish i had saw tina in it um so you see her a little bit the end in the scene is cute um yeah that, like that their relationship's the one thing i miss because it's like it's like that kind of like awkward like two people yep. who aren't really social like i like in the first two movies when it's there i'm like oh that's kind of like you know fun to see yep. and then it was just missing in this and i'm like you gotta be kidding me you wait until the end scene where it's like most convenient to like do this and i'm like you could have done this so many other times or had other big reveals but mm-hmm. whatever it's just the way it went yeah and i mean just going over to the good, Eddie Red Redmayne, who plays, um, I think that's how you pronounce the name, Eddie Redman, Red Redmayne, whoever plays Newt, dude is fantastic. Like, Newt's character in every scene kills it. it. He is serious, quirky, awkward. It is a blast to see, yeah. And we'll talk about the good, <laughs> but um, just <laughs> everything he does is awesome. He plays so many different roles. I think Dumbledore's actor, Jude Law, is also fantastic. I mean, I think the acting in the movie is great in general. Like, and I guess, do we have anything else we want to talk about the bad? I'm trying to think. I mean, besides pacing and, like, the lack of Tina, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't really see anything else that was, like, too controversial or bad with what, the movie. Yeah, I mean, either. I think, I mean, I think pacing is an overarching theme for the movie, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if you have bad pacing, there's a lot of other things that branch off from it. Again, like, underdevelopment of your characters. But... I'm fine with it. another character underdeveloped. We might as well talk about it. Is and I, I think it's Professor Ilmori. She's the woman yes. um, who teaches over in America. She te- I think she teaches in America um, charms. And part of it was I didn't know her name well because I didn't. We didn't have closed caption on in our theater, obviously. Um, and then I watch a lot of things on closed caption, and you just can't make out like the spelling. And then it's like obviously it's a different like language or a different like blend of syllables. So like. I think it's Illamori, maybe. Don't know. Charms Professor from America, I think. Um, like, you don't know much about her. And I think her character's cool. But, like, again, I'm sitting here, like, I don't really know where she's from. I don't know who she is. I don't know how to say her name. But she Wait, got a lot of uh, screen time. Was this the professor that, like, you know, the um, the one that was with them with the book? Yes. Are you talking about her? It's it's pronounced you, you Lally... Ulawi, Professor Ulawi. Okay, that would make sense. Ilmori might, I think Ilmori might be the American school. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, but like, they didn't really put any background to her. Like, I see her, I'm like, are we supposed to know who she is? Is she, like, a descendant of, like, someone from the, like, original series? Like, I was like, who is this? Yeah, you don't know who it is. They don't really explain it well. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, okay. they, ex- they so explained the... Uh, it's, okay, this makes sense. So now that I'm, now that I'm reading the wiki... Um, it makes sense. Or Harry Potter fandom.com, Harry Potter Wiki. Um, it's you, Lally Hicks. Um, ah. And they call her Lally. And then she was American Witch, Charms Professor at Ilvermore. Yeah, Ilvermore is a school name. I should have known that. Um, so, and I think she's really cool. But um, I think she has a cool relationship with Newt and whatnot. But yes, underdeveloped. You don't know much about her. She's kind of. I hope she comes back. I, like, I really did enjoy what she brought to the screen. But, again, underdevelopment. 
Um, yeah. And then so I think. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, the last thing is uh, what is it? Lita, Lita, Lita Lestrange, right? Is that her mm-hmm. name? Yeah, that's her brother who was also with them, right? Uh, Theseus. Yeah. No, no, Theseus no, not, is not Theseus. Uh, her her brother Lita's. Uh, the guy who like um, oh Yusuf Kama. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. The, was he in the last movie? Yeah, he was. Okay. Um, Yusuf Kama's thing is he's the last of his pure bloodline, so you presume that he is low. He's younger. He's younger than Lita, mm-hmm. which again doesn't make sense by like how they look, but whatever. Um, <laughs> wait, no, I don't think he's younger than Lita. Yeah, what, whatever like, the case is, he says he's the last of his pure bloodline, which again he calls Lita his sister, but like he's Lita's his half sister, not his full sister. Oh. Um, they they keep calling it that and. I get why, but they are half they they are half siblings because Yusef's dad. No, no, Lestrange's dad took, like, bewitched Kama's mom to have a kid, and that kid was Corvus Lestrange, who died at sea. Um, so pretty much, the dad. So, sorry, Kama's, this train of thought is wild. Everyone listening to this, I'm sorry. Um, Kama's dad sought revenge on the Lestranges for, um, for, like, taking his mom away. So, Kama was instructed pretty much by his dad to kill the last pure blood of the Lestrange line, which he thought that Credence was Corvus. So he was like, I will kill Corvus because it is what my dad has told me to do because he took my mom away. And then, and then when he, that's why he was the whole time he kept calling him Corvus in the, in the crime of the Grindelwald. And it was like, that's when Lita was finally like, that's not Corvus. But again, I don't think he wants to, he doesn't want to kill Lita. I think he does want to kill Lita in a sense, but also Lita would theoretically remarry and change last names. Now, still the bloodline, but Lita also explains in her family tree that the women are flowers and the men get pictures. So, like, it's not as big of a deal for Lita to be killed as Corvus would be, but again, Corvus died at sea. So now I think Kama just, like, got into the fold. Because, again, he doesn't want Krim- Grindelwald to, like, um, get there. But again, he's again he's underdeveloped because you're like, okay, cool, I know why this, what this guy's motives were in Crimes and Grindelwald, even though they're super confusing, and, like, me saying it out loud, I'm, like, piecing together things, and I know about it well. Um, but, yeah, so, Kama is another character that's underdeveloped. Um, they kind of plant him in there as, like, a spy, but you kind of don't know how he, like, got around it. Yeah, like, like how he... I have no clue how he pulled it off, because, like, he got his memory erased to Lita, and then still, like... I, I have no clue how he pulled it off without Grindelwald realizing, oh, wait, I'm about to get stabbed in the back by this dude who could see, like, the future. I think it was because, I mean, Kama's probably pretty powerful, so he could maybe block it a little bit. Maybe he's, like, pa- like good at legitimate. Um, but I also think it was, like, he did come there with a good sense of, um, like, he did go to Grindelwald with the truth being that he was sad about his sister's loss his sister's death so then you kind of get closer a little bit and he's like he races he takes his memory away but then i think at that point like he was kind of more like cool tom was fine like yeah because they were just like that was like the reason why but they didn't look deeper maybe Mm -hmm. um i would like to see that explain a little bit more but a little bit of underdevelopment there um part of me think i think did queenie lie in that scene in the beginning she was like queenie can you read him I feel like she lied. Oh, yeah. Queenie was definitely, like, a double agent the yeah. entire time. Um, and it was kind of cool. I think it was kind of a good... Like, you sometimes felt on edge about her, and, like, she does piss me off in a sense, like, make a decision, <laughs> but, like, she kind of... play. Like, she is very much, like, I am helping Grindelwald because I need to right now so I don't die. But, like, I secretly know I made the wrong decision and want to get back to Jacob. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah. So, I think... Unless we have anything else, I no, think we that's will all get, the bad. Yeah, I think that's the bad. Um, again, from a movie standpoint, like, filmmaking, there are big issues. But I think as a Harry Potter movie and just Solid. a fun film in general, it's very fun. And that's why I want to talk about the good and interesting bits. And I think the first part is, I think it's funny, right? Crab I think walk. the movie is very funny. And now what Raj is doing 
is ob- like is by far the funniest part of the movie because like like it's a very tense moment but you see Newt get up in his like little crab position like this can't put my arms out because it'll be out of frame and he just does this and he's swirling it's the hip move it's not even the hands it's the hips, it's the hips. and his interaction with Theseus Theseus is like what the and Newt is like you need to swivel your hips and Theseus is like no and they almost die and then Theseus is like Okay, okay. And it, he's, like, moving in the hips because he's imitating these crabs, and it's, it's so funny. Um, Love that. And there's, other, and there's other funny moments in the movie where you're, you, you laugh. Um, like, they have the Dumbledore saying three points to Hufflepuff. Um, I think it might be five points. Um, five. He says that to, yeah, five points to Hufflepuff. And it's, it's just like a very looking quick, like, it's like, I got kicked out. What? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, it's just these very, like, funny things they say. Yeah. Um, throughout the course of the movie, so I, I think it's pretty funny. Um, Jacob is hilarious, as always, um, in it, which is just r- refreshing. Um, and I also think kind of goes along by funny, but I, I appreciated all the callbacks, like, to the other movies. There's a scene where Jacob touches his neck because he's, like, kind of thinking he's dreaming a little bit, but it's a callback to when he got bit on the neck by Newt's animal and was, like, like the first time they met. Like, when he first stole the case, and then he was, like, it started this whole magic thing. Like, that's why he felt the side of his neck. And I, I, I can't call them all out here, but there were just, like, these little things where I was, like, this happened in another movie. Mm-hmm. Like, this is why it, like, this is, it's coming back now, and it's cool to see. Um, so I appreciated all of that. I mean, I wish I had some of the more humor on hands, because I thought the movie was quite funny. Yeah, I'm trying to remember some other funny moments, because there's, like... I mean, the ending with the whole wedding thing and, like, Newt just going, like, trying to read his best man speech. I've, I thought that was a pretty good bit. Yeah. Like, you know, good, good a cheerful ending. And then, I'm trying to think, besides the crab walk, there was, um... I mean, the crab walk, like, it happens in the middle of the movie, movie and you can't help but just, like, laugh. smile. It's like, it's like so this just... tense moment, and then you see Newt going, let's go, Theseus. Mm-hmm. And I think I thought what was a good thing, and I know some people have issues, is they feel like these movies are Harry Potter and we have to throw some magical beasts in there. But I like the way they're incorporated into this movie. I think they were incorporated a little bit rougher in A Crimes of, Grindel- of Grindelwald, but I like the way they were incorporated in this movie. I totally buy that there are scorpions in that dungeon and that Newt knows how to get around them. I completely buy yeah. that this chillin, who's a mad, they're magical creatures. Of course, they're gonna have weird abilities. I totally buy that they would have used this animal to like pick leaders back in the day. Like that's what people did all the time back in the day. They like looked up to like God and like look up to these other figures to make the decision for them. So like it makes sense that they would use the chillin. Um, Pickett is Newt's little like branch dude. Um, I used to know the name of the species. I forgot the name of the species. But, um, are there a Bronwickle, something like that? Um, I wouldn't know. Bow Trickle. Bow Trickle? That's, that sounds so. right. Um, I think it's a Bow Trickle. And, um, like, he's all, with him all the time, but, like, it makes sense. Like, he do, that's what he does, and I, I think the animals are cool. You have, you have Pickett and Teddy. Teddy's a Niffler. They get this, their own little, like, escape arc, which is, like, really cool, because, like... You see that, like, Teddy is, like, cannot resist the gold. He's about, there's that, a scene where scene. he's, like, jumping to go, um... It looks like he's, he's about ju- to go save him. Yeah, he's about to go save Pickett, who's going to fall and hit the ground. And he reaches for the gold coin to stuff it in his pouch. And it's hilarious, because you're like, this is a super dramatic scene. And you know the whole time, you're like, those are gold coins. <laughs> like, he's going to go get those. Yeah, I really like that scene too. Like, it, it was nice to give them their own escape arc, and like, you like cut, you hear Newt like give the signal, and it just cuts to uh, whatever the name of the mole animal creature thing is. It's just pulling out the tie, and like, I mean, when he, when he was giving out all this stuff in the train, I had a feeling that tie was like probably a poor key. Like, it would yeah. make sense. Like, I, I I was like, okay, that tie has some importance. It'll come back later. Mm-hmm. And then you see him pulling it off. I'm like, yeah, it's gonna teleport them. It's gotta. Yep. But, like, when he was pulling on the tie, I was just like, dude, this dude is so screwed for what's about to come. Like, you can just mm-hmm. tell, like, and then he got what he what he deserved when, you know, his little firefly just went mm-hmm. dead. So, like, that whole, like, arc was pretty funny to watch. Yeah. I really enjoyed, I, there are some rough parts about it, but I really enjoyed the fact that, like, the plot of them is revolving around not knowing what's going to happen because Grindelwald could, make, could see the future. 
and I think that is really cool. They are being so entirely vague about their plans. They're like it throws us off. Like mm-hmm. I didn't know who had the case. You could have convinced me all the people would have had the case because I could get an argument for why Jacob would have the case. They just called him very pure of heart. Of course, you wouldn't expect the muggle to hold the case to the chillin'. I could have seen him holding the case. I could see Newt holding the case because it's Newt's case. Theseus is a horror. The Charms Professor's badass. Like I like Bunty. Like I Bunty was a little bit weird to hold the case, but she's also Newt's assistant and held the case the entire movie. So like during that scene, I didn't know who had it. Exactly. Um, I was like, I was making like, I was thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, they gotta have it given to like Theseus or someone who knows how to defend it because like. If if you give it to like uh, Newt's not the best duelist in my opinion, so like he's still powerful. Though. You still is. see so, you do see some scenes, and especially in the first Fantastic Beast, yes. and even in this one where you're like, he know like legit magic, and I think and I, we'll go into that in a second. Mm-hmm. Keep going. So like yeah, like Newt, I I feel his brother. It's, he's an he's the head or of the British Ministry. Like obviously he probably is more powerful than Newt. My, in my head, I was like, okay, they probably gave it to him knowing, like, he will put his life on the line and can defend it the whole time. But then, like, I slowly see all the suitcases just going away. I'm like, I, I honestly forgot about Bunty, too. I was yeah. like, where did she go? Yeah. And you see for a moment, it's really cool, where they lose. And everyone thinks they lose. Like, they, like it's not like everyone's like, don't worry, Bunty's got this. Like, when Newt's case goes away, they pretty much thought they lost and that Grindelwald had taken over. And you see Bunty makes her way up. And I think it's really cool. Because you see everyone's, like, shooting up, like, yeah, let's go, Grindle. And they're putting the sign up there, like, the his sign up there for Minister of Magic. And then you the chillin' comes out. And you're like, uh-oh. And you see as soon as Santos is um, nominated or get, gets Minister of Magic, all the yellow flies up. People are not supporting Grindelwald. Like, when Grindelwald got it, there was some green going up, but there's also some red and yellow. And as soon as Santos gets it, you see pure yellow going up. People are running away. And Grindelwald kind of, I think this is where Grindelwald knows he's lost. Like, I think the next two movies are very heavily going to be in in the hero's direction. They're not going to, they're not, like, these first two movies are kind of like, oh, man, the heroes are really catching up to, like, Credence and Grindelwald. Like, they're, they're one step behind like great graves who's who grindelwald is posing as in the first movie like he's deceived everyone no one even knew he was grindelwald he gets captured but like then in Grind- crimes of grindelwald he escapes and he's creating fear through everything and he's able to convince credence to come to his side and then this movie he literally wins the minister of magic election he's in control of everything and he loses that and now now that he loses that and the blood pact is broken you're you'll you will see in the next movie it is going to keep until finally what we presume the fifth movie to be the big infamous duel between um Dumbledore and Grindelwald which I might I don't know if it's going to be a duel that's my prediction but interesting I remember telling you I'm like I feel like in this movie there's going to be at least one duel between Dumbledore and Grindelwald there has to be because they need to break the blood bond somehow I don't know how they're going to break it but I felt like there's going to be a duel and when I saw it I was like Thank you. That's all I've wanted to see, like, just any, like, clip of them fighting. Like, Mm because you don't really see Dumbledore, and his fight with Credence, that was, I really enjoyed, like, like, the CGI and everything they did for that. I was like, wow, that, because, like, you see Dumbledore in his old age in the Harry Potter series, and, like, this was years ago, so, you know, technology wasn't as crazy. So, like, yeah, the fight scenes were cool in Harry Potter, like, in Order of the Phoenix and whatnot, but, like, we got to see Dumbledore in his prime in this movie, and you're just like, wow, I knew he was yeah. powerful i didn't know he was that guy though yeah i mean he again he's the only wizard that doesn't fear um grindelwald anyone and everyone fears dumbledore the only two people that called voldemort by his name tom is grindelwald and albus dumbledore in the books like, they're the only people that really call him tom harry calls oh, him tom harry. like sometimes but not much so like dumbledore does not fear anyone and it i i agree i was i kind of forgot about it this, the, when he fights Credence, you see how absurdly powerful this guy is. Credence is throwing everything at him, and Dumbledore is just like, block, 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 block. Like, he, he's, he's not even fighting back. And he starts by, like, he sees the mirror, and he, like, blows this water droplet over and pretty much takes him to another dimension. I was like, what did Dumbledore just do? Like, he, like, 
Doctor Strange mirror dimension. Then next thing you know, like you see him use the little light thing that he mm-hmm. gave Ron. That was that, right? It's a deluminary, yeah. Yeah, he used that thing, and I'm just like, it was like a combo of Doctor Strange using uh the mirror dimension and like a Pokemon using Trick Room. Like I was like, what is yeah. going on? This dude is like, this dude's the he's he is probably one of the best wizards to have ever lived. Yeah. Um. Absolutely, and, like, we don't get the explanation for about the whole mirror thing, which I hope we do get it, because, like, is it a mirror verse? Is it just, like, happening in there? Like, who knows what it truly is, but assuming this fight was really... Like, it got taken to a different dimension. I mean, all the signs are flipped, it looks like, um, when you look at it, so, like, it does look like it's a, a different, like, a mirror of their world, and I believe it would be a mirror, because, like, the way they come up from the ground, they come up, like, through that, like, mm-hmm. flip over, and it makes sense. To me, it's that way, but he just, like... He takes it to another dimension. He's blocking the spell. He pulls all, like, the dark energy out of Credence, talks to him for, like, a few minutes. And then he's like, you can have it back. And that that's what convinces Credence. He sees for one minute what Dumbledore is saying without the hate in his, in his body, and he's like, he's got a point. And it's really cool. Like, even, I just love the sim- symbolism of, the phoenix comes mm-hmm. during that scene when the hate is there the phoenix comes and it's blowing away with its wings like the hate the dark energy that is going to try to get back to credence and you see this bird who's been with credence since the end of crimes and grindelwald is truly like a du- like it's for dumbledores and it is like trying to save credence it's trying to help dumbledore out um and I don't know, that, that scene is super cool. You just see the power. And that was going to go right into my next good part about it. The magic in this movie, super cool, super well done. And it makes you smile if you're a Harry Potter fan. It was it was the coolest thing to see. The, the uh, scene with Jacob and uh, I already forgot her name. That the charms professor from America. Oh, Lally. Lally, like that scene with the book and like her you doing the storm thing to make it look like Jacob was actually using like, okay, that was the one thing I was confused about. Does this wand actually work? It doesn't, no. right? Okay. I was thinking, I'm like, okay, there's no way they gave him, there's no way he could use it. But, like, that entire sequence was, like, I was, like, wow. I was blown away by, like, how well made it was. Yeah. And they, Bless and you. they have, what? Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> and they, ha- they have, um, yeah, they just have a lot of cool magic. And, I mean, some of it is kind of, like, I don't know where this came from. Like, I was saying, like, the only ways we know how to block a killing curse were it was nothing until the ancient magic Lily Evans used to save Harry Potter when Voldemort came and killed him. And then when we saw Aberforth and Dumbledore's wands combine to block the killing curse. Which, I don't know if it was like, it was an act out of love, or if it was just that like, two protection curses combined wasn't enough to save the killing curse. I would like to go with that. I'm not really like... Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate all the sentiments of, like, love has in Harry Potter, and I'm all on board with some of them, but I'm, like, don't really know if I need the, the act of love block that killing curse there, or more just, like, just two powerful wizards with two powerful protection uh, charms that met together at the same time, and we were able to block it. Like, that would make sense to me. Yeah, um, 100%. And, like, when I saw that, I'm like, did they just block that? Because I, 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 I am a pretty decently big Harry Potter fan. I know, like... The only time it's ever been blocked was when Lily used, like, or, like, whatever, like, charm or, like, love or whatever it was. Yeah. And I was like, I thought that was the only time you could ever block it. Because besides that, you saw Sirius get his, you saw Sirius get his pack smoked. You saw, like, you saw both his dad and all, anyone who's gotten hit by it. Yeah, it's called the, it's, like, it's an unblockable spell. Like, people just don't, like... It's not often like you can like shoot a spell at it, I think, but like you can't just like go, like your wizards it. will go like this to block spells. You can't just do that with the killing curse. Mm-hmm. So it was super cool to see. Um, like I mean, I, when you saw the killing curse going to Credence, I was like, I was like, oh, he's and done then you for. see and you see the streams of come together and right and the blood pact. And as soon as that blood pact breaks, you see Dumbledore, and instantly oh it clicks. It is instant like fight it's like they let's both, go they both realize they're in that little like it's, i don't know i'm gonna call it the spirit realm because i don't know what else to call that little like well because i'm order, the, the same drop thing happens right it goes over to grindelwald and then you're just like 
here we go. Uh, that that fight seeing both of them battle, I was like, wow. I like I just love seeing like good Harry Potter duels like that, and just yeah. seeing Dumbledore go all out. I was I was kind of fangirling a little bit. I'll admit it. I was like, yeah. wow, that was amazing to watch because like the one thing I will admit Harry Potter kind of does lack in the series is any crazy big duels. Like early on, I understand they're like you know they're still learning, but later on, like they did get better. This duel was probably like it was not even that long, and it was really good to watch. Yeah, and it like, but even the whole time you're like. Dumbledore doesn't look like he's trying, and like you see, and I'm interested to see. No, and you're, I'm really interested to see what happens with some later duels that we might see, and even the Harry Potter world as a whole, whether there are going to be TV shows and other movies that come out in the later two in this series, will be how do the duels look? Because there's not really that many cool duels and um, the other movies, and they definitely get away with it a lot. They like do this the one connection thing a lot to try, and I don't really think everyone has twin cores like that, so they kind of just use it a lot for like convenience. Um, because even Dumbledore and Grindelwald had their, like, wands meet, um, and whatnot, but I'm interested to see what they look like, because I think the Dumbledore and Voldemort duel in the Ministry of Magic and Order of the Phoenix is super cool, and it's, it is it is awesome, but it also uses a lot more, like, water, and they aren't really apparating around as much, mm-hmm. but you see with the technology, they apparate a lot more now, but these yeah. duels, again, are very much more fast-paced, um, blocking and whatnot so it's, it's really cool to see and it makes me excited to be like if there is a final duel which i don't know if there will be but if there is what is it going to look like well we know dumbledore is gonna win but like it's yeah, gonna dumbledore be wins. it's gonna be a very cool duel to watch like i feel like it's gonna be like it's not gonna be like a quick duel it's gonna be like drawn out probably for mm-hmm. a while and like i think it's gonna be a combination of multiple things like Maybe, maybe Dumbledore, there's going to be a point where Dumbledore looks like he's about to lose and then, you know, someone helps him or, like, something's going to happen and it's going to be one of those longer duels. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah, want to say it might parallel the Harry versus Voldemort duel where, like, you know, you see Harry gang is, like, Harry's kind of, like, getting bodied and then Nagini dies and then, you know, it's, like, back on Harry's side. Like, I feel like it's going to go back yeah. and forth between them a lot and then Dumbledore comes out on top. Yeah. Well, what's really cool is, like, Dumbledore is losing. Like, his wand is almost all the way pushed back but he doesn't even look panicked. He just kind of, like, dials in a little bit. And he kind of just, like, yeah, he just, like, literally, like, just kind of, like, pushes a little bit forward and just drives Grindelwald all the way back. Yeah, and then, like, that combo where, like, they kept apparating and, like, you know, blocking super close. I'm like, I'm like, how? Uh, yeah, you never it was, you don't see this in the original no, movies. No, and it was so cool. Like, I know they're not swords, but to see them, like, blocking like that and whatnot, I was like, that is like this is a weapon that shoots things out of it and i've seen people use it to cut throats before like it makes sense that if you got close to someone that you'd go like that and you can also there's spells where like you can take people's memory out um and whatnot so like like i mean haggard grew a tail on someone so it's very plausible that like wizards would want to get up close and personal that they wouldn't just like sit around like casting from far away so like I thought it was really cool to see them get close and do some blocking and to do some, like, of that kind of... I thought it was super rad, and, like, we hadn't seen it before. Um, And again, the Charms Professor did some super cool things. I thought all the pages stuff looked good, and I'm not a big CGI person in terms of, like... I don't notice when CGI is really bad all the time, but it just looked good. Yeah, that's where where we get Peter to come in for the CGI. Yeah, Peter is always critiquing CGI, but, like, I didn't notice anything wrong with CGI. I never was, like... That scene looks bad. I was, was like, good. everything looked really well done. Yeah, like, so. I'm trying to think what other CGI moments there were. I mean, watching the crab walk, it didn't look weird at all. Like, the creatures actually look like, you know, they're meant mm-hmm. to be there. The pages were good. The final, all the duels were good. Just showing, like, even the Credence duel. Like, if you look into the coloring of, like, the entire duel, like, it has this, like, gray-like feel to it. And then all you see is Credence is, like, a little orange and black thing. I don't know whether it's the obscurity or whatever. Or- is that what it- Credence is orange and black thing? Yeah, what's that, like, orange and- Like, whenever he cast his spells, it was, like, always something orange and black attacking. Oh, it's part of his, like, Obscurus. Yeah, that thing. Like, that was really well done. Like, overall, like, the duels in this movie and the CGI, I would say it's pretty good. But, I mean, we need Peter to watch it to, like, critique it fully. Yeah, but, like, I just- I dug it. I dug all the magic stuff. Again, there are things where you're, like, never heard of that before. But that's kind of the point, again. Like, the books- 
like they do have more magic obviously than the movies have like harry does a lot if you have not read the books harry is not a useless wizard who doesn't know how to do anything for himself it's just how the screenplay like portrays him like yes harry actually does fight people and actually does win more often than people like see he didn't just like win because the wand chose him like um but it, i do think it's very cool that you see new magic here that's kind of the point it keeps fans invested I want, like, I, now I want Pottermore to, like, release an article about what Dumbledore, um, how the Mirrorverse thing worked, because I want to know about it. Like, that's super cool magic. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I was very pleased. It was very fun. Um, I did have another point I wanted to make, but now I am forgetting, which is... Liking. I know. Yeah, well, while you try to remember, the one thing I do want them to look, go into more is, like... Because before, during Harry Potter, I never really thought, like, hey, I didn't know there were magicians or, like, wiz- not magicians, wow, wizards and witches in, like, the U.S. or, like, other countries. It never, like, occurred to me. Yeah. And then seeing Fantastic Beast, and the first time, like, wait, there are wizards in America, so that means there's wizards everywhere. Yep. Please look into that more, because it'd be very cool to see stuff like that, because think about it. Was there a wizard in World War II? They cut it on, yeah. Yeah, that's I, I want them to explore that lore a little bit more. Yeah, and you just led me right to like what I was about to mention is the movie has like political parts about it, not making political statements in our world, but like it is a political thriller in a sense that like you see the German minister of magic, like he says that he do, he doesn't follow Dumbledore's advice to like not allow Grindelwald to be charged because he's like there will be killings in the street. And you're like I was totally like I could see that. Like, if you were, like, Grindelwald is a bad... Like, like if you said Grindelwald was a criminal, yeah, people might take to the streets and riot, and people could die. And you're like, we like, a free election, like, if people don't want him, then he w- then we won't um, win. And it's like, there is that political aspect of it. Like, they're running an election, and Grindelwald is using, like, kind of shady tactics to win this election. But the Minister of Magic doesn't want to step in because... If he does step in, it's going to look like he's fixing the election, and then people are not going to trust them. And the, the political aspects of the movie were very cool as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I I don't know if we had anything else we wanted to talk about. I think we all, especially talking about it now, we all very much enjoyed the movie. Um, it, was, it was very enjoyable. Um, again, there were underdeveloped parts. I, I think in a, on a film-making level, it left some to be desired. But I think on a Harry Potter coolness scale, it hit all the marks. And I think it's very exciting to see the next when the next movie come out and what they look like because um, it should be exciting. And I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll have, like, Tina back. And obviously we're going to lose Ezra Miller because of his um, – I don't even know. He's, like, going to court for something. <laughs> um, so – I'm sure he's not going to be back as Credence, but maybe they'll just write off Credence that he died because he's in really bad shape mm-hmm. at the end of the movie. But, I was um, thinking, though, like, for the next movie, I feel like the fourth movie would be, like, you know, them trying to save Credence and, like, Grindelwald. That plot would enter, like, Locke or something. And then the fifth one's, you know, the big ending where Dumbledore would actually fight him. That's how I think the next two will go. But if this Ezra Miller thing doesn't work out, then they might just write him off. Yeah, I mean, I think looking ahead to the future... Looking ahead to the future, we don't know what they're going to do. We presume, again, I don't know if there will be a fight. The Rita Skeeter kind of says, like, hey, that might be a myth that they fought. They, they had this epic duel. Um, like, there's a lot of, like, misinformation around, like, no one really knows the specifics of the duel. What ha- Like, they just know that Dumbledore won, got the Elder won, and Grindelwald went to jail. Um, so maybe there won't be a big fight. Maybe there will be a big big fight. But at the, at the end of the fifth movie... Grindelwald will be defeated. Probably. I mean, he kind of has to. Well, yeah, unless, I'm saying, like, unless he's oh. defeated in the fourth movie and they mm. start, turn around. But they have years to go. The timeline that they say in the books when Grindel, when Dumbledore beat Grindelwald, it would be too soon. So it'll be interesting to see what they could do. I could see a year or so, not real time, like in-universe time, taking place before they go to the fourth movie because it would be like, Grindelwald has lost followers. Grindelwald lost the election. Like, people are going to be taking a second to be like, like Grindelwald's going to have to take some time before he's like trying to take over the world again. Like, he can't just like go right back into it. 
Yeah, um, and I have a feeling Santos is gonna like you know she's gonna. I think she might like you know bring the charges back because he Grindelwald had uh, the German Minister of Magic in his pocket. Yeah. So like that's the only reason his crimes were dropped and like the new Minister of Magic. I feel like she's gonna. She might be like okay he was under in his pockets the whole time so i'm gonna bring the charges back on him because he did kill a bunch of people mm-hmm. but i think i could totally be like a situation where then grindelwald like gets chained up or something and he's like no and he breaks out or he like tries to stop this from happening and i think it will be again another political th- thriller and i think you will see him probably by the end of the fourth movie rise back to some form of power and then be like and then when you go into the fifth b- movie knowing this is where it ends. Um, so I'm really excited to see where it goes. Um, I haven't listened to anyone else's thoughts about this movie yet. I usually would listen to them. And again, my favorite, one of my favorite channels, Super Carlin Brothers, they just post something out and I was resisting the urge to listen to it. Um, I'm hoping everyone agrees that they liked it because I really liked it. I don't want a buzzkill, but I did want to put my un, unbiased thoughts out here today. Um, so I guess in a in a sentence or two, Raj, maybe more, but how would you describe this movie in a sentence or two? Uh, definitely need to rewatch Crimes of Grindelwald if it's been a while so you're caught up with what's going on. If you're a Harry Potter stan, uh, you will be fangirling basically throughout most of the movie. It does hit all the marks of a Harry Potter movie in terms of dueling and everything. Overall, it's a solid movie. Don't go into it expecting it to be like the next big Deathly Hallows movie or something like that, or Order of the Phoenix. It's a solid mm-hmm. watch, and it's good to watch, and I recommend you go see it soon. Yeah, I would echo the same sentiment. I think this movie, I would say this mo- in, a, in a concise statement, this movie is not the epitome of filmmaking. There are issues with pacing and with development of characters, but if you're a Harry Potter fan... It is going to be super enjoyable. You'll be on the edge of your seat the entire time, and you will go home being like, that was super cool. So with that being said, I think we are going to conclude this episode of Extra Cycle talking about our review of Secrets of Dumbledore for our spoiler and non-spoiler thoughts, even though our spoiler-free thoughts were like two minutes long, but we had to talk about the spoilers. We spent about an hour on here, so it's been good. Um... We will see you guys next time. If you have not seen episode 13 of the podcast, Now in Color, I recommend go watching it. It's a pretty good episode. This will probably come out a day or two after that. So if you haven't watched it, that means you should go back and watch our first episode in person on the video. And again, we are here today and we're happy to be here. So Raj, I guess we will depart here. Thanks everyone for listening and have a good one. My name is Raj. You're watching Disney Channel. Bum, 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 bum.